from monsters and ghosts to otherworldly beings. Join the explorers as they venture into the darkest realm seeking the truth to what goes bump in the night. Good evening and welcome to Explorers Seekers of the Truth episode 19. I am Chad Charlesworth and as always I'm joined by my best friend and co-host Les and Cavage. How are you doing this evening Les? I am fantastic my friend. How about you? I'm doing great, you know, especially with, uh, you know, I'm not sure if we're announcing it tonight or not, but, you know, with our new sponsors and partners that we're working with here at the team of, you know, Explorers. Yeah, yeah. Um, our friends at Brand Nexity, um, they're uh, kind of a, an online uh, company, if you will. They, they, they specialize in e-commerce, SEO content, basically anything to drive a business online is, is where their specialty is. And they're, they're one of our sponsors. And uh, well, we're coming into a sponsorship with them. So we're pretty excited about that. And uh and what they're going to be helping us out with. Um, but now, aside from that, now saying that, you know, I want to let everybody know how you can reach us. And I'll bring up the agenda. Hopefully, oh, no, it's not preloaded anymore. But you can go to our website at www.explorersgroup.com. You can find us on Twitter. And the handle there is at Explorers Group. Here on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Explorer explorers group um and we're on youtube you can get to the that link through our website explorersgroup.com uh go on out there subscribe to to the show hit the notification we'd greatly appreciate your support on all of our media outlets so uh we hope to see some people checking us checking us out there and on we're on instagram now i believe right we're we're, our social media Outlets have been growing. We're on Instagram at Explorers Group. We're on uh, Vimeo. Uh, I believe that is at, at Explorers Group as well. Uh, kind of all over the place now. Reddit. We're on Blogspot. ExplorersGroup.blogspot.com, and you can actually get to our our blog um, straight off of our uh, website. If you go to the home page in the lower right hand corner of the the home page. You could have a direct link to our blog, but that is explorersgroup.blogspot.com. So check that out. And another really cool announcement, and I want to say thank you to my colleague here. Uh, Chad finally got us onto iTunes. So you can now go to iTunes and search for Explorers Seekers of the Truth, search for any crypto or paranormal related topic. And I'm 99.9% sure we have that keyword tagged to our show. But check us out on iTunes so that way you could continue to enjoy the show when you're on the road or whatever. All of our shows, once they're uploaded to our YouTube channel, are automatically going to populate on our iTunes account. So you can always stay current with the shows and go back and listen to archive shows there. You can get the archive shows on our YouTube channel and as well as on our Facebook on the live shows tab. So check them out. Check the show out wherever you want. Uh, but yeah, we're on iTunes tunes now. So that's pretty awesome. So thank you, Chad, very much for getting that done for us. Yeah, no problem. It you know, just took a little bit of YouTube and you <laughs> yeah. know, reading. But Google now, is a wonderful thing. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Now for our oddity of the week. And this story was brought to us by our friend Sean at Anarchy Newsroom. You can check them out at Facebook backslash Anarchy Newsroom. They're going to be uh, doing some very good content work coming up in the near future. I don't know if they've quite launched yet, but they're in the process of getting ready to launch. So this story mm, is trouble connecting on laptop and phone. I don't know, Sean. Uh, try and maybe restart Facebook or something. I don't know. We have technical issues all the time. <laughs> yeah. So oh. this story is um you know you may have seen it circulating around on the news recently or you know online i know it's been shared a lot today but yeah, it's uh, a real odd one this this totally encapsulates the oddity of the week this is just bizarre. yeah and it's basically it was you know labeled uh missing white face skier found alive in california now white face is the mountain where he was skiing so it's a uh new york police said that constantino danny Philippus. 49 of Toronto 
was found 2,900 miles away Tuesday in Sacramento. He was reported missing last Wednesday by friends who said they could not find him as the ski resort that they were skiing at had closed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of just, you know, surmising this news report. His belongings were found at the lodge along with his car was, you know, still found in the parking lot. And they basically spent 7,000 hours combing this mountain looking for him. The crews used canines, helicopters, hundreds um, of volunteers. Yeah, hundreds of volunteers from the state police, local police, forestry, and stuff like that. And he basically turned up in Sacramento, California, where he made contact with law enforcement officials. Mm -hmm. He was reported to be in good health. And he seemed a little confused, but nothing physically wrong. Now, when they found him, they found him in his ski outfit, his helmet, and his goggles, okay? And basically, uh, before Tuesday, the police had said they had no reason to believe that Philippinus had, uh, was not on the mountain. Now, as we said, the actually Department of Homeland Security, New York State Police, New York uh, Department of Conservation, United States Customs and Border Protection were also involved. Um <laughs> He is a married father of two, a 28-year veteran of the Toronto Fire Department, mm -hmm. and had been skiing with a group of firefighters and retired firefighters. Now, they did a press update on Wednesday of this story, and basically the, the story they're giving is that he had hit his head wandered off the mountain to a road, flagged down a truck driver, and then spent five days on a cross-country drive with this truck driver, making it to Sacramento, California, where he bought an iPhone and got a haircut. Now, one of the strange things in this story also is he had one credit card and a $1,000 in cash on him while he was out skiing. And, and to me, looking and listening and, and kind of going through this story, this is really um, just that, that, like you said, it is the oddity of the week. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many parts of, you know, he has no history of mental illness, no substance abuse issues. He's a captain with the Toronto Fire Department. So he's not. You know, he's not one of these guys who isn't trained, isn't knowledgeable about head traumas and stuff like that, would have no reason, you know, not to, even if you got to a road, why would you just willingly get into a truck and drive five days cross country and not think to contact anybody? Right. And one of the things that kind of make me scratch my head is, wouldn't the truck driver find that a little a little odd that there's this dude now now correct me if I'm wrong but if I believe I read correctly the report that you had put together for the show and what we had read online didn't the trucker pick the guy up completely dressed in his ski outfit yeah yeah because he was actually found in his ski outfit in California with the helmet and goggles on full ski and, suit and he goes and gets he's fully done up ski ready yeah gets in a truck with this dude fully ski ready now if i were a truck driver and i saw this that would be kind of red flag number one all right so that's odd then they start driving across the country the dude gets his hair cut and everything still dressed in complete ski attire yeah goes into a a i would assume either an at&t or like an apple or a, a cell phone store right Yes. fully dressed for skiing now i would imagine if he were skiing and he bumped his head and lost consciousness he'd be walking around doing all this even in the ski boots yeah you would think because i mean you wouldn't have a change of shoes if right you're out right. Skiing, you know? exactly now so why would you walk into a store like that and and, and why would the employees not be like the hell is up with this guy ski boots yeah. ski outfit you know well think about it first of all you can't buy an iphone you know pretty much you can't activate one or anything like that without an id right so he's also not a u.s citizen so it's not even 
you know, one of those things where it's like, oh, he bought an off the back of the truck type deal. Like, oh, I just happened to come across this in the parking lot with some dude. Yeah. But he's doing all this dressed in ski gear. <laughs> but the, the thing that gets me in, like, um, Sean and I were talking, um, was truck drivers generally, most trucking companies have rules against picking up hitchhikers. Right. You're going to pick up a guy in ski gear. Now, you know, you're by a ski resort. You're going to pick up a guy in ski gear and then he's just going to drive five days across country with you. So show me film of him at a truck stop because they would have had to stop the gas up. They would have had to stop to eat. Show me coming. Show me any evidence of this truck driver and him crossing the country together. Mm-hmm. And the, the truck driver is not going to call anybody and say, Hey, I was coming through New York and I picked up a guy dressed in ski gear. Isn't somebody that is going to like dispatch or something like that. Aren't they going to go? Uh, yeah, that dude's been missing now for three days. You might want to contact the police. Right, right. And why would you have a thousand dollars in your pocket while skiing? I can understand the credit card because you might want to buy drinks and you know food when you're out there and stuff like that, and, and gear or rentals and stuff like that. But why would you carry a thousand dollars in your pocket while skiing, I, dude? None of this I, makes I, sense. I, no, no. Because usually when you go to a place like that, you you I mean you have a little bit of cash. But you yeah. typically try not to, to carry too much because you're doing so much, and or or you would lock everything up in a locker at at the you know the ski shop or you know before you go out on the lift and whatnot. Now I, I yeah. I'm not a skier, but I would imagine yeah, not, it would be something either. like that. Yeah, because yeah. even when you go to a public pool or something like that, you get a private locker that you could lock and whatnot. You know, if you wanted to. I mean, if I had a thousand dollars cash on me, I wouldn't be out in the mountain where I know I'm probably going to fall and and lose yeah. contents and stuff like that yeah i mean i okay if you're in a one of the zip up you know like tight ski suits that go over your clothes mm-hmm. i could see having some money in your pocket but a thousand dollars like yeah. i don't care if it you know like he he was out with a whole bunch of firefighters and retired firefighters and i can understand that it's a you know guys weekend and stuff like that or whatever but like the other thing like you just wouldn't go out with a thousand dollars. Like even if you were the one buying the beer for the night, you wouldn't have a thousand dollars in your pocket randomly. Right. Right. You'd probably put it all on a car to make life easier. Yeah. And the fact that like they had to state that he got a haircut, you know, like, you know, if you're out with a bunch of guys or girls, you know, in general or a group of friends, Mm-hmm. With the way social media is nowadays, somebody would have a picture of him when they got there or the night before or something like that. Like none of this story is just, it just doesn't jive. Now, a lot of it, <clears throat> not saying alien or anything of that sort, but this fits like a lot of the abduction scenarios and stuff like that. Like we were talking about Travis Walton um, two weeks ago. You know, how, you know, Travis Walton was found or, you know, found himself alongside a road, recognized where he was and and, and went for, you know, to a pay phone back then. Mm-hmm. This guy went 2,900 miles away. Now, yes, it is a reasonable amount of time to travel via modern car or something like that. But think about it. You can't get on a train, buy train tickets without ID. Right. You can't buy bus passes without ID. You can't get on an airplane without ID. Now, unless this is one of the world's greatest practical joke, which if they find out it is, they will charge him criminally. Mm-hmm. And he had rented a car already and had it waiting somewhere, you know, off the, the mountain somewhere. And he walked to it and took off. But then why would you wait seven days and then be like, Hey, I'm in Sacramento, you know, call your wife and call. Yeah. I believe he actually called the fire department in Sacramento to tell them who he was and that he was, you know, stuff. Okay, so it, yeah, it's it, that, I mean, honestly, this is, 
you know, one of those things where you look at it and you're just like, it, not one bit of this story fits Makes the sense. next piece of it. Right, yeah. right. It all gets stranger and stranger and stranger. And I honestly think, uh, like you, like, I honestly think it's going to end up coming out as some kind of a stupid hoax. But yeah. I, but but the sad part is, is I, I, I'm intrigued. I want to know what happens next. You know what I mean? I'm almost yeah. kind of following this little mini series, if you will, of this wackadoo. You know what I mean? But it yeah. would be interesting to see what happened. And the weird thing is, like, I could understand, you know, people that have jobs, law enforcement, firefighters, EMS, there's a certain type of brotherhood that you develop in those jobs. And you, you know, with that brotherhood, you're always trying to one up each other with pranks and, you know, trying to get your friends. <laughs> this just would just seems very extreme to, mm. to pull this off, knowing that your friends are going to start the procedure of searching for you. Like I could understand if you were waiting at the car at the bottom of the hill, you know, with a case of beer, like, haha, got you guys. But this was a cross country trip that he took to get one over on his friends, if it is that. Right. If not, I mean, we'll never honestly get to the bottom of it, I don't think. You know, because there would be no way they would ever, you know, Unless he undergoes therapy for repressed memories and stuff like that, and it pull, you know. But then again, that's not a hundred percent concrete evidence that something really happened to him, be it a non-rational explanation. Yeah. But I thought this story, you know, Sean had brought it to my attention, and again, that's you know, Anarchy Newsroom on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys check him out. He had brought it to my attention the other day, and I was like, "There's our."